uh, today's session. And there you can see um, our speaker, Dr. Rachel Sale, and myself, Nellie Deutsch. And we're going to get started. If you could just add in the chat box where you're from and anything else you'd like to add. How the weather is in your area, because in many parts of the world, uh, the weather is not that great. All right, so I can hear the echo. Oops. All right, so a little bit about, um, sorry, it's echoing. I don't know why I'm hearing my voice. I'm trying to um, see. Okay, no. Are you wearing a headset by any chance, Rachel? Or you forgot to put it yes, on? Yes, I am. Oh, you are? No, I've got one on. Oh, you're yes. kidding. I hear an echo. Maybe I'm in twice. All right, so let's hope... Um, it doesn't come out, just my end. All right, so a little bit about Moodle MOOC 3. Uh, it's the third one. We started in June, had one in October, and now we're um, in February. It's uh, a MOOC of 28 days where uh, there are presenters on each of the days in February. So it's really, really exciting. And uh, let's get to... Um, what you can get from the MOOC, you can get a certificate of completion as there we are that I just wrote my name there, but that's what it'll look like. Basically, what you need to do is respond, reflect on 10 of the live sessions. It could be the recordings. If you can't make the live sessions, that's OK. In addition, you can get badges on the Moodle. So this is not only about presentations on various subjects relating to uh, learning, whether online, face-to-face, -face, and so on. But it's also about Moodle. There are two Moodle courses. One is Moodle for Beginners, and the other one is for those who have taught through Moodle. And there are four badges, one for each week. All you have to do is simply um, access all the uh, activities and get your boxes ticked. That's what it's all about. So. Um, for those of you that are interested, make sure that you uh, get support if you have any questions on how this is done. Now, our speaker today is um, very involved in Moodle and in integrating technology and helping teachers learn how to use technology in their courses. Uh, she's got a lot of information on the challenges involved in, um, in doing this. And there are a lot of challenges. So uh, Rachel is the right person to ask questions. Feel free to use a chat box to ask questions. Uh, we'll get to them at the end. Uh, the weather where Rachel is right now <laughs> is pretty bad, as it is in most parts of the United States, northern parts, maybe central as well. So uh, let's hope technology holds out and everything works well. But you got to keep this in mind that technology is not above the weather. All right, so Rachel, I'll mute my mic, take away my uh, webcam, and let you get started. Okay, yeah, it, as I found out, Matt has dropped twice, so if I disappear from the class, give me about 30 or 25 okay. seconds, I should be right back. Okay, okay yeah, is. As I found out, Matt has dropped twice, so if I disappear from the class, give me about 30 or 45 seconds, and I should be right back, hopefully. And uh, But I'd like to talk to you today about using Moodle Activity area to align your learning goals with assignments, because more and more we're finding that it's, it's critical in an online class to have your learning goals that align with the assignments, and then after we do that, it's time to align your assignments with your assessments. But it's kind of a 
it's like you have to build a roadmap one area at a time. So we're going to look at this for this Moodle MOOC and possibly next time look at aligning uh, assessment of assignments. So I'll tell you a little bit about me. Uh, I started out life as an art teacher. And uh, back in the 90s, whenever uh, I was teaching art, the principal called me in and said, well, you have to do the school website now. And uh, I was like, well, what does that mean? And he goes, well, you're the art teacher, and it's colorful, so you have to do it. And in about six months, I discovered my life's passion of web design and instructional design and decided, well, I'm going to go back to school and figure out uh, how to do this for a career. So I returned to Capella University and uh, received a PhD in education with a specialty in instructional design. And then as I moved to higher ed, I found out I needed to more talk the talk of the IT people. So I went back and got uh, uh, MS in IT so that I could speak their language too, because it seems like uh, to be a good instructional designer, you have to talk the talk for everybody. You have to know how the students are thinking. You have to know what is on your faculty's mind. You have to understand what the IT people are doing. And then you have to think of all those lofty things that accreditors are going to look at, like alignment and curriculum goals. So um, it's basically, as we all know, being a good educator or online developer means that you have to be a lifelong learner. You don't have any choice about it. And one of the things that uh, uh, that brought this to mind is that uh, here, an international program that's starting now is called Quality Matters. And they're certainly not the only evaluation tool that you could use. Without an excellent rubric that allows you to uh, discuss alignment throughout your course in kind of what is a, a nice logical way that anybody uh, with any degree of understanding about education can uh, use. And so we are bringing that to our campus. We're in the second year of it. And I found it to be a, a great addition to just good common sense and um, going back to school for a, a more formal degree. Um, right now, I am the director for the Center for Teaching and Learning at Lincoln University. We're in uh, Missouri, which is right in the middle of the United States. And uh, uh, it's been a, a very interesting experience there. I've been there for six years now, and that's actually how I met Nellie, was we started talking whenever I was new to higher ed. And she was always a great online mentor. And I finally met her, I believe, at the ASTD conference a couple of years ago. We finally met face to face. Hey, um, I always believe in telling my students why they have to do an assignment. And th I'd like to start this by saying, why do we need to, to have this alignment? And basically, by creating these measurable levels, we define a roadmap for the course. And that forces the instructor or the developer to start a course and think things all the way through before. I'm sure that if any of you have worked in a design uh, department before, you've always run into the instructors who want to come in two days before school starts and just throw the first unit in there. And they say, well, we'll just build it as we go. And I find that to be so detrimental to the process that, that we owe our students of excellent online education. The one thing that we've learned is that you need to plan this entire course ahead of time so you have time to figure out everything that could go wrong with technology or everything that might happen. How, you know, how often have, have we heard that what one person hears can be taken in several different ways. So if you word an assignment one way or the other, you know, maybe the wording's not quite right. And by planning well in advance, you have the time to find those mistakes before your students find them for you. Um, and I, one of the things that, again, a lot of people, I think, use the four pay learning management systems. And trust me, I, lo I love Blackboard. I love Desire to Learn. I love Canvas. They're all great systems. But the reality of our educational system is that many schools use Moodle because it's free. And I, I like to be a proponent of Moodle and say that you know you need to accept the fact, uh, you big names uh, LMSs, that Moodle has a lot of great benefits. And that if you creatively use your add an activity or add a resource tool, 
you can plan engaging and enlightening courses for your students that will match up against any other learning management system. No, that's what I just said. Moodle's not great just because it's free. Moodle's great because it's versatile. And Moodle's great because it is collaborative education at its best. You know, I, I, whenever you have people from all over the world working to developing, to me, I think we get the benefit of some of the world's best developers into that. Okay, now uh, we talk about learning objectives, and whenever you get into your class, one of the things is that your learning is tell you and your students where you go from the beginning of the course all the way through the end. But it's important to remember that we have uh, not just overall course objectives that need to be aligned, but you also have unit objectives that need to be there. So in other words, a student needs to hear, at the, by the end of this course, you're going to be able to do this, you're going to... Uh, be able to compare and contrast this, you're going to be able to uh, design this or that skill, but they also need to have it reinforced in every unit, little subsets of learning that are going to build to that total map for the course. In other words, uh, they also have to be measurable, and whenever I say that, it's just, again, efficiency in online. We don't want the student to look at it and feel like they have to go through that whole loop and what's it going to take to make you happy? You know, whenever we design quality online education, I think it's important that your students understand that here's what it takes for you to go from point A to point B. You're going to start out knowing this amount of knowledge and at the end of this unit, we're going to know a, a certain amount more, and this is what you have to do to make it uh, uh, to make that goal of learning happen for you. And again, I think that also helps the students understand that they're constructing their own learning. That we're there to help them, to support them, to be a success. You know, I always tell my students, "Not here to fail, students. I'm here to help you be a success." But I am not going to do your work for you. And a well-written and measurable learning objective. I think empowers the students to know how to do that. Okay, and this is a, a thing brought about. We call it taxonomies in learning, and Bloom's is certainly not the only taxonomy, but it's one that uh, comes about through Quality Matters. You hear a lot about it, and it talks about students going through different levels of learning. In other words, you have a freshman student who is coming into a computer science program, it would be very unrealistic to expect them to look at a program and evaluate yes, or synthesize that program. You are. probably getting that because but you the might. system's trying to uh, fix itself. Okay, I'm seeing check audio and video. Am I coming through okay, okay. Nellie? Um, I am. Um, um, okay. Okay, well, let's go back to Okay, so what I, what I was great about that is it allows you to take the students through a student oh, okay. learning. Um, I am, uh, uh, okay, well, let's go back to Bloom's. What, I, what I's great about that is it allows you to take the students through a series of learning. Uh, you start out with something that is basic knowledge, like maybe list five points, and then you comprehend, apply it to real life, you analyze that, you synthesize that, and then you reach an evaluation stage. This may not happen in one semester. You know, it may take uh, four semesters before you take a student in a given topic from one to the other. And but uh, I say, fortunately, you can find a wealth of measurable verbs to write your objectives. And uh, this is a Bloom's taxonomy action verbs. Uh, all you have to do is Google. Learning taxonomy, and you'll find many different taxonomies and many different verbs to use. But it gives you a good way uh, to keep in front of you as you develop your learning objectives. And you'll see that some of these verbs are actually used in different ways in different categories. But that way, you know, you're not asking the student to do more than they're capable of doing, but you're also not um, making it too easy for them to meet those learning goals. Because if you have a senior level student, they ought to be able to uh, judge or justify or interpret something. 
and uh, maybe getting them to make them really demonstrate that they are ready to go out into the career world. On the other hand, if you have freshman level students, that knowledge or comprehension may be getting them into it and um, getting them interested in your subject and letting them see where they have to go over the years or over the semesters with you. Even though I use this taxonomy every day because I work in a department that designs classes for a cross university, so I may be working on a business class one week and on a PE class another week and then on a biology class the next week. I use these verbs all the time, but I can honestly tell you this is one of the few things that I give me out and keep right in front of me. I'm not a big believer in printing. I always talk about having a, a print-free environment. But I think that these um, these things give me a way to make the, the my assignments different so that the students are not always seeing the everything and uh, that it, it just gives me a way to focus. Um, do the teachers work with the designer or does the designer do all the work? Um, I guess that would be whether you ask my designers or you ask the professors. <laughs> Many of the professors are completely new to Quality Matters and to online training, so they feel like they're working hard, but uh, basically my designers are very well trained in being uh, politically correct and uh, guiding them to do the right thing. Okay, now this is an example of, of how you might have the same topic and approach it differently using your Bloom's taxonomy. At the knowledge level, if I have an ending graphic student in my class, I might say list five ways to use graphics in a brochure. And by the time that they're a senior and they enter my technical writing class, I would say justify the use of a different font. That, that is a, a much higher level thinking, requires them to do uh, much more research, and uh, ask them to bring some of their own professional thought to it. Because, you know, hopefully by that time you're having a, a lively discussion on whether you really want to use that type of font or not. Okay, uh, this taxonomy provides us the levels and verbs to go with those levels. But the important thing is now to figure out how to create assignments that align with those written objectives. You know, to me, I think uh, many of us who have been in distance ed for, I'll say, the last 10 to 15 years kind of grew up with a, a course where you went into a class and you had a topic each week that you were supposed to study. And then you had two discussion questions that you had maybe to post by Wednesday or Thursday night. And then you had to respond to everybody else by Sunday night. And you felt like you were really doing exactly what the, the instructor wanted, and you, but you knew it was going to be the same thing every semester. Read, discuss, discuss, write a paper. And yes, it is boring. And I think that I, I call that yesterday or sore design because uh, um, there are so many things you can do with your students without resorting to that just the same thing every week. And that's what I, I call Moodle activities. And you will not believe this, but I actually found that image on Google Docs. And yes, unfortunately, Nelly, it's done today. It's unfortunately still a part of the big name institutions. Um, I know you'll see it um, in most of the uh, what they call the for-profit institutions. And I think in some degrees, uh, those of us that are out there fighting the fight in public education are taking the lead at using activities and different uh, ways of assessment because we know that yes it might be a little bit more work for the instructor but it's well worth it whenever it comes to student learning okay and uh, we're going to switch to Moodle here in a little while but I took some screenshots and uh, whenever you go into Moodle you will always in the lower right hand side of each topic area see a little plus that says add an activity or resource and uh, in Moodle the activities of course are things students do and resources are things that students can look at for learning um, one is not necessarily better than the other because we certainly need to provide our students with a wealth of learning resources 
But of course, I like to add an activity because that engages the students. They're doing something. They're, they're thinking, they're clicking, they're moving their mouse and moving their eyes around the page and doing all the things that we now know will create their engagement in the class. And the great thing about this is that you have so many different things. I mean, if you're a person who likes games, you can have them, but you can have journaling. Uh, you can create a quiz. And um, quizzes do not just have to be for assessment purposes. You know, you can use a well-designed quiz for um, to get creative feedback. And also, if you can uh, Yes, I, I agree with you there very much on using the revised taxonomy. And also, if you're Googling for a taxonomy, uh, also uh, you can Google for special, a special version that uses uh, technology friendly words. So again, that chart that I showed you was not the only one. It's just one of many. Uh, but uh, to go back and talking about using quizzes, you can use a quiz as kind of a way to get some private information from students and then use that to springboard into a discussion area. Maybe you ask it as a quiz, you have an assignment or an assessment essay question where you ask the students to justify or assess or evaluate something and you want a private answer. You don't want them taking everybody else's answer. You let them enter the quiz area and provide that information to you and then you can take the results of that and post in an assignment area and then springboard into a discussion saying uh, pick someone else's answer that you agree strongly or disagree strongly with and justify your reasons. So, uh, oh yeah, there's there's lots of other taxonomies. Like I said, if you, if you do not like blooms or you want to uh, use something else, just check around. Just go for learning taxonomies and, and you'll see several come up there. Blooms is certainly not the only one. Another thing that is great in uh, Moodle is that you can have surveys, you can create wikis, and you can use a workshop. And a workshop area is a great place for peer review because you can put in an, a, a rubric for grading and then have the students review each other instead of uh, your word. And I use that all the time in my technical writing class. I make my students assess each other's work. And on a typical end of the end of class instructor evaluation, I always get four or five comments that say, I hated the peer review at first, but by the end, I found I was looking forward to it. And students begin to see that they learn not just from me, but they learn just as much from each other. Okay, and uh, if you are new to using these activities, one nice thing that I really like about uh, the add-in activities is that if you roll over, scroll over each one, you will see examples for that define what it is. The choice activity, for example, is highlighted here. And then it also gives you several ideas of different ways that you might use the choice activity. So in other words, do you want a quick poll? Do you want to quickly test the student's understanding or help them with decision making? So it kind of helps you think outside the box on different ways to use the area. Also find that any one of these activities, if you want to see actually how to construct it and add all the bells and whistles, another place you can go is to go to YouTube and simply uh, do a search for like using feedback in Moodle. And you'll see a bunch of different people who jump in just like we are saying, well, here's a unique way that I found to use it, and here's how I set it up. For example, uh, I talked about how I, I do not believe. Okay, and talking about whenever you write your objective, you look at the activities that align with the verb actions. Um, for example, uh, I talked about how I, I do not believe that yeah, you should. Yeah, I put on one of my uh, websites. Okay, are, are you I'm happy with here the about game the activities. I'm not, not sure that. I like it. Do that you have much, the game setting in there, Nellie? Or I, I find the game to be very simplistic. In all honesty, if I'm going to put a game in, I usually will build it in. Um, oh, like, I, I find the games to be very simplistic. In all honesty, if I'm going to put a game in, 
I usually will build it in, um, oh, like uh, a Captivate or something like that, and build an interactive game or a rollover game, and then I'll just link to it as a web link using the add a web link. Or um, if you're, we no longer subscribe to it, but I used to use Soft Chalk, and they have some uh, some different games in there. Or you can uh, find websites online that have student games and just link directly to them. So you can, uh, you're not just limited to the Moodle games. And again, I, I find some people use them very effectively for vocabulary. Uh, just the other day, I had an instructor tell me that uh, she does a quiz based on the glossary and that the students have to take the test 10 times quickly. And she showed me a, a very neat amount of data that she'd accumulated. She showed that for a beginning level, 100 level class, the students came out of there knowing like they were all scoring 90% on their final vocabulary test. And that was because she had forced them to do it over and over again. So um, something I wouldn't have thought of, but her data did not lie. And, and I believe in, uh, uh, I very much believe in doing what data says. So, and I also agree with all the postings I'm seeing about just don't put a game in for, uh, for gaming sake because you know, our students come to us, many of them, as very mature gamers. And so if you put something in and you think they're just going to have fun with it, they're probably going to end up looking down on you as opposed to appreciating what you've done. Gaming theory is in itself a, it, a unique area that you need to put a lot of thought into before you try to incorporate it into your class. But I'm talking about um, ways to take this activities and get away from just posting discussions. If you have, a, a, instead of putting a form in, if you would consider using a wiki. So you're still getting your students to post individual thought. You're getting them to disagree with each other because whenever somebody crosses out your, uh, your input on a wiki and replaces it, that certainly is an interactive engagement way of saying, oh, I don't agree with what you posted. So uh, it's, again, it's just a different activity, but it gets away from the same old look and feel of the classroom. And I, I think that increases the students' uh, excitement as they come to the class each week to see what you're doing. It's not the same thing every week. Uh, what are we going to do this week? Are we going to do a wiki? Are we going to do a poll? Are we going to have an, a writing assignment? There are many different options. So that uh, gives them some sense of excitement in coming into the class. Okay, and I talked about this, uh, submissions on a multi-criteria here, and <laughs> somehow my thing got jammed up, but basically it uh, this allows you to have uh, different forms of peer assessment. And I, I cannot uh, say strongly enough that I think peer assessment is probably a great thing for students to get into on Moodle. They can, and you can use much more than the discussion forum. As I said, you can use a wiki, you can use the uh, assignment tool, you can even uh, create discussion forms that are set up differently in the. The, uh, there's one form in the discussion that you can set up where students cannot see each other's postings until they make a reply. So try using that as a tool to get them uh, posting and not thinking about what everybody else is saying. Okay, and this is a range application. And I took this from uh, a nursing class. Uh, and again, we talked uh, about the lower students or the lower level students, 100 level students, maybe just doing, uh, uh, it's not too difficult to make them do wikis. I, I think it's the tool does not define the level. The, your, what task you ask them to do defines the level. I mean, you might use a wiki that asks everybody to list five basic tools. And the, the difference in the wiki entry would be the students' listings. And you could, on the other hand, you could do a wiki that said evaluate of the major tools. It's the same tool with different uh, 
different tasks that you ask the students to do. So you pick the level of learning. Uh, in this case, a, a mid-range assignment would be application, asking students to apply what they know to an actual situation. And uh, so you would demonstrate how to perform CPR on an infant. But you might ask them to create a video instead of doing that. And in this day and time, I, I know I feel like two or three years ago, I met a lot of resistance from instructors who didn't want to incorporate student videos because they said, well, I don't want to ask the students to have to go out and buy a camera or do something like that to record themselves. But in reality, most of your students have their built-in video camera right there on their phone. And that's simply a part of their world. So to ask them to film themselves uh, performing CPR on a dummy or maybe on their own child is, is not, uh, not out of reality. And they could use a forum post to add the URL to show the video. Another thing that I think is a great thing to link into Moodle so that your connection speeds work great is to use uh, SkyDrive or Google Docs and tell your students to put their, their heavy files into those and just link them with the URL so that you don't have to wait for the school server to load that video up. And that also, we found that saved us quite a bit of money because we were able to eliminate one video server by doing that, having the students just link to their videos. Okay. So this is, you could then take in a form and post the link to their video and then you can ask the students to evaluate each other's performance. Okay, and uh, basically now I was going to go into uh, uh, a screen view, if we could, Nellie, of, of a Moodle page and uh, kind of let you guys see if, if you have different things that you want to try Moodle, or inside, ask about uh, as far as inserting courses or kind of question Moodle and answer teachers, time now. Or where would you like us to go? Any old Moodle area is fine with me. So I can, you can, if you want to screen share, I can take you into mine, or we can. Uh, if you can go into yours, we can. Yeah, I'm having problems because um, I'm any, any old and Moodle area is fine with me. And, and so I can, you can, if you want to screen right share, I can with, take you into uh, mine, or we can. And uh, and if you want to go I into it, really, uh, I don't think I can, but maybe you know what? Maybe I can, and I don't know that I can. I'll, I'll see if I can. If I can. Um, Okay, that that will be super. That would be great because right now it's okay. it's just going in circles. Okay, well I've got my okay, middle class right. open, and then you just can just kind of tell me the questions on. that are popping up. Pardon? Oh, it is working. Okay, it doesn't matter. I just wanted to check if it's working or not. Can we Good work to know with that it's back to normal. Middle. All right, go ahead though. Yeah, go, work with Hangouts through Moodle. No, but maybe I should okay. leave my audio, my mic on. Okay, so can you I see, see my Moodle area now? Computer. And what I see right now is just uh, the whole class. Your uh, the whiteboards just. So maybe it'll take a few seconds, depending on everybody's system. Oh yeah. Oh no, now I'm seeing another okay. whiteboard. I'm looking. I see. So are you? Not yet. Are you screen sharing? You sure you went into? I don't think you're screen sharing yet. You have to um, click on the screen share. At the okay, top. so you can't see oh, my middle Now class. you started. Okay, now it's starting. I remember you did this last time and it was so helpful. That's when I saw the games and I went out and bought them for my Moodle. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Not yet. Okay, so Kojo, you, as you far as see, I know, uh, no. Can you see my Moodle page now? 
I don't even think it's going to happen. I don't think that Hangout is going to go with Moodle because um, I don't think the coding would work out. But who knows? I just wonder if we did uh, share a URL option, you know, in the add a resource, and we just went to the Hangout URL. Yeah, but that yeah, you could do that with. I just wonder if you yeah. did uh, share a but not URL from the class the way say, uh, was uh, you know in the add a resource well, and you, you just link to your hangout actually, URL. Right? It's all linking and then leaving. Is it coming through? Okay, let's see how long that takes. So it. You know, and, and the great thing I, I would, you know, it says it's uh, initializing. Um, and I think the great thing about uh, linking directly from your classroom is uh, to, that you don't give the kids a chance to go from your classroom to Facebook or whatever they're on social media. If you link directly from the classroom and you come right back into the classroom, they never have the time to lose their train of thought. And I, I know that probably sounds very minor, but I, I think it's kind of important to keep them. I want to keep them in that classroom, just like in the, in the old days when I would stand up and lecture. I was never the type of person, even in the early days of cell phones, to say, oh, you can't bring your cell phones in here. I thought it was incumbent upon me to make my class so interesting that the students did not want to, to get their cell phones out, that they were more interested in the content that I was sharing with them. And but now on my online, I always feel that I need to keep a way to so that they're not distracted by outside things, and that that is done by bringing them into uh, directly from the Moodle back to that URL. Uh, and another thing I find I even have to remind my designers to do is whenever I'm clicking, I always tell it to open either in a pop up or in a new window, because if you don't, the student wants to come back to your classroom. All of a sudden, if they if it's not set right, they're logged out and they have to come all the way back and enter Moodle from the beginning. Well, the problem for that is there's a million distractions once they come to that browser. Well, I just Other talking things about might be not more interesting leaving. Someone mentioned there back to, to that the classroom. Uh, so it's a good idea to keep them the in design the techniques class, that I think are huge that in making the class a success. While you're trying to get the screen sharing to work, I can't leave the class. I can't minimize it. I can leave, but I can't minimize. In other words, I won't be able to come. It'll be difficult to come back, which is a good thing. I don't know if that's intentional or what. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, yeah. Can you, it could be your connection right now. Maybe it's a bit slower because of the situation there, the weather. Mm -hmm. If you could stop it and share the link and I'll I'm just gonna, go there I'm for gonna you. I'm going to close my screen sharing because for some reason it's not working. So. Can you add it in the chat, or you can't see the chat? Okay, let me. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's Moodle. Okay, so let me do that. Edu. Okay, so it's Moodle you, dot. You, you, I can't see anything right now. I think Ling. I think my internet speed is so slow. Ing. I I really apologize. For Lincoln, the like Lincoln. Ah, because it's Lincoln, right? Okay, Lincoln the school. Yeah. Dot okay. Lincoln stop. Lincoln dot org. Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah. No, Lincoln U dot edu. If you just want to take the screen share into your Moodle, that's fine too. Oh, we can just can use the, the, chat, the chat to talk okay, because was, uh, whoever brought up the idea of the Google Hangouts, that's super. I can't wait to try that now. There. <coughs> you still can't see the chat? Yeah. yeah. No, um, unfortunately, I think uh, I'm Because I can screen share. <coughs> I, I just need your um, the link. Otherwise, I can't go anywhere. It's screen sharing. Okay, so just tell me uh, verbally again. I'll try to go in okay. there. Uh, give me the letters because I'm not sure. Um, okay, let's go there. Uh, it's <coughs> okay. What is it? Link. What, how, okay, let's. I'll go to mine. Should 
Should I go in as the? I should go in as um as Nelly, right? Shouldn't go in as a as a uh, admin. Can you see it? I don't see it right now. No, no, it doesn't. It screen sharing just opens up for everybody, but I don't see it screen share. I'm looking at my other computer. Okay, so your screen share is that on the see white, it screen on sharing yet three? on the other one. So on I'm not sure three? you see anything. Do you? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, it'll come. It'll come. Uh, it'll come in a few seconds because I yeah. see it's moving. No, I can see my. I see the, the little for non-beginners that you had at the beginning. And the new all. tab that I try to open. So I guess it should take you know, a few rather seconds. than waste people's okay, time. Okay, now you should be you able can... to see me going in. Okay. You... Do you see that? Mm -hmm. You don't see anything yet. Yeah, right. It's it's not. Even though I'm there, I can see that I'm there nope. on my other computer. I can see that I'm screen sharing. My... No, nope. but even the other computer is. I wonder if my internet one. speed is just so. so slow that this is not going to work here. Okay, I'll tell you where where I am. Okay, uh, do any of the others see this? Let me just check the chat. Um, can you see my screen? Can you see the Moodle yeah. course? Let's see if they can, and then you can just, we can just, you tell me where to go. Oh, they they can all see it, Rachel. All right, so, yeah. So where would you like me to go? Okay. I was just going to open up the, okay. Uh, it must be my, it must be my internet speed, so. Uh, tell me what some of the questions are. Okay, I was just going uh, to okay, open so up the uh, add an activity. Um, okay, add an activity and and see if people have case. ideas for things that now that they would like to use for something in their own topic area. I should have gone in as admin. But we could just yeah. Add an activity and talk about different ways to use something in the topic area. And we could go down to gone through the different, uh, uh, add an activity and talk about different ways to use things, like I said, besides uh, the form. Okay, I'm going to go in as admin Option. because it's too slow for me. Okay, so we're talking about uh, one of the courses. Yeah. Yeah, just any course and then go to add an activity and and uh, I know we talked about how to use Google Hangouts in there, but okay, who, I'm going to add an activity. Okay, so like we've got assignment, assignment 2.2, I'm on 2.5, advanced uploading online text, upload a single file, offline activity, put it online, chat, and so on. So what would you like, um, if you could add in the chat? Oh, they're asking for the book, setting up a book. That's that's for the teacher. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm all right, I'm your eyes now. Go ahead, oh, tell me what to do. Yeah, okay. Uh add a book. That's a great one. Oh gosh, I wish I could I wish I could uh, get in there. Okay, so you're gonna you're going to add the book activity, and um, I even use the book activity for, to create an interactive syllabus because you create your book activity, and then if you look over on the left hand side of the page, uh, you're after you create the you name your book, and then you click the plus sign to add pages. Whenever you go back for a student view, that it those pages that you're adding are nice, concise links that show up as uh, almost like hyperlinks so they can quickly go down and click on what they, from page to page, what they want to see. And within the book, it's uh, another thing I love to do is to insert YouTube videos or interactive things right off the web. You can insert them because each book page has its own WYSIWYG editor. 
So I can add a link in there. I can add video. I can add pictures. I can highlight and change text colors. So, it, you know, it's like each page of the book becomes something that is just as versatile as any book you'll see on uh, like iBooks or something like that. You just kind of have to think outside the uh, the page a little bit. If I want something that the students can click on and hyperlink to look yep, at, that's exactly I create an image, a insert the hyperlink inside that image, and it becomes exactly an interactive what they do. They hyperlink for them area, to another, go from the I book the to tab. another web page. And, uh, um, and I know yeah, we just recently did an upgrade. Uh, I'm on using Moodle 2.4, and uh, in the upgrade, uh, they added uh, the print. And um, and I know yeah, we just recently did an upgrade. Uh, I'm yeah. on using Moodle 2.4, and uh, in the upgrade, uh, they yeah, added a, uh, the print option, and you can a print point. a that's chapter exactly or you, you can, can print the entire it. book. So uh, I think that's a great thing too for the students who want to have something in their hand, which is nice. To hold. Or if you're putting it out there, that's a study uh, They're guide. asking for SCORM, was it? SCORM. Yeah, SCORM. Uh, that seems to get people too. Rachel? The great thing in that is for to transfer, if you're going to bring in something like from Soft Talk or Cultivate, it's more a way to easily import. I think the great thing in that is for to transfer, if you're going to bring in something like from Soft Talk or Captivate, it's more a way to easily import files that are created outside Moodle. So, uh, you know, and again, if you're going to create something and you want to make sure that it goes to any other LMS or anywhere you, if you're going to go somewhere so and speak what, and you're not sure what's the, the format, trick? A lot of people are to me, the, the form package is um, more just making sure that it, it works, plays well with others and works anywhere. I've got one open now. Any, suge any suggestions where I, we might go with a SCORM, adding a SCORM? Okay. Uh, in all honesty, whenever uh, because I just opened one, and what I find is if you're gonna if you have trouble that the score might not work, is uh is in all the bells and whistles underneath. And I think it's just a, another one of those things. Sometimes it's almost like Moodle gives us too many options. And okay. so usually if I'm importing something, I don't use those restrict access or any of the dates below. I just concentrate on bringing in a good package file. And we use that uh, at our school. We those use are that expensive. for two things. We use it to bring in soft talk files <laughs> and captivate files, and uh, and import them as a package file. There. Yeah, that's a problem. Yes, they they're, are. they're wonderful, but they're very uh, expensive. Mine, mine are mine are old versions. Well, I, I can don't know tell if you can you, see this back right, in the day whenever grant money was available. Right now, <laughs> the. Uh, the editor has oh, what's um, called something wonderful, Poodle, okay? And um, you can actually get your students to interact by adding images, for example, in a very simple way. They can even take a, a photograph of themselves, all on Moodle. So here I am, okay? Um, you can't see me yet because I don't see it there, but you'll see it in the recording. And you can take your photo the way you would in Google or on Facebook, which is really exciting for them. Okay, there I took a photo. And then you can simply insert your own photo. Okay, there it is. It's not a very good one of me. It's a pretty bad one, in fact. But just for the uh, demo. In addition, they can also go into the editor with Poodle. This is all Poodle. And they can add audio. They can actually record their voices. There I'm recording. And... Add the link, which, which is really really exciting. So these are options um, are today recording. for uh, using the and editor with add Poodle. The link. No. So I'm going to go back now which to class really, because really I think exciting. that uh, we may get timed so out, and I see the internet connection is super slow. So I'll stop screen sharing. Did we lose Rachel?
the weather's really bad there we may have lost her but i've stopped screen sharing i don't know what you've seen it still seems to be showing screen sharing but i'm not all right so um we'll give rachel a few seconds see if she can come back yeah it stopped but it's a no nothing's crashed no we haven't crashed <laughs> sounds like we're on on the plane right no everything is fine we haven't crashed we're we're okay um do you hear me i guess you don't hear me so let me uh, get my sound oh uh, yeah my sound went down to zero you should be able to hear me now can you hear me no yes no um I don't know why the audio in a minute. I don't know why in the world the sound keeps going down. I hope somebody takes care of this. There we go. You should be able to hear me loud and clear. All right, we haven't crashed. Everything's fine. You'll get the recording because I'm recording this for uh, and uploading it to YouTube and Vimeo for those of you who prefer Vimeo uh, because there are no um, ads on Vimeo. Are there any questions? Oh, Rachel's back. Rachel, so you're back? Or um, I see a smiley there. Yeah, I, I, can, I can hear you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so did you come in with another link or something? I just refreshed my yeah, I, I, can, um, I can hear you. I can, I, I, I'm in the middle of a storm. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Anyways, I hope the storm will be over really soon. I just refreshed my view. The what causes a glitch? And I think in my case, it's the fact that they, I'm in the middle of a snowstorm. <laughs> the connection is slow to stop the uh, the video and the yeah no the video the video and then things um, are a lot better. So we went through Poodle. I highly recommend. I think you're gonna love it. I fell in love with it at first sight. The audio. And join Justin Justin Hunt, who's um, one of the developers if not the developer he's very humble um and he he um is not only a soft um uh, where developer but he's also an english language teacher originally from new zealand now he's been living for years in japan yes poodle poodle is uh, is so much <laughs> it's it's actually a way for students to connect through audio video whiteboard rachel there's even a whiteboard as well as uh games and and different activities that are just amazing i have no idea how he did it oh there's marianne thank you there's a scorm wonderful tutorial video today ah that's great great um everybody's interested in scorm i have no idea why for me moodle is quite enough but it's nice to add uh rachel also mentioned that uh, it's not always necessary go ahead well i i can hear this so i have to be second kind with it because it's, you know a lot of people think that that's well, I, to, I, uh, the ada compliant well, I I think here we're so I uh, have to be so concerned with it because uh, you know a lot of people think that that's the way to uh, be ADA compliant as opposed to um, looking at independent design factors. They they want a system that will do it all for them, and I, I don't I feel like that's maybe not the the right way to look at it, but. I get a lot of instructors okay, that, but it uh, seems to be everywhere. that will come in and say they want their work done in SCORM because they want to be Ah, the link to Poodle. Compliant. It's so just Poodle. That's it's, just the image. Let me get, go right back now. to this class, I mean, to where I am. The uh, Yeah, I would like it's that It's just link, Poodle. Link Poodle. Ah, there, I think I left it there. Ju there it is. There's the link to Justin's. Oh, it just disappeared. Uh, can you find it? Ah, there it is. Um... It's in the chat somewhere. I think if you copy the chat, you should be able, oh, there, I found it. You should be able to get it. Did you get it? Did somebody find it? There. Yeah, we reposted it. Reposted it. Okay, great, because I can't copy it for some reason. It won't let me copy. Okay. Thank you. There we go. I got it again. Yeah, it was okay. funny posted it. 
Yeah, and you can also go into the website, but it, Justin Hunt is going to be speaking about it. So um, I think that's um, to get firsthand information from a developer um, is the best way to go. He also provides support. He spends hours uh, providing support for free on Moodle.org for English teachers on Poodle and other um, other things as well. So he's very active there as well. Okay, so uh, Rachel, are you? Busy playing on Poodle. Oh, you are. <laughs> you are. Listen, why don't you join the chorus? I, I'm telling you, when I first <laughs> laid my hands on Poodle, I I couldn't stop. I, I'm busy I was playing recording on Poodle my right voice everywhere. <laughs> I was responding by voice. I mean, I was going absolutely nuts. You know, like a little kid with with a new toy. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Susan, uh, creating of ideas about using groups and subgroups. I know uh, we've had a, a lot of luck in our okay. recently launched an MBA okay, program. Uh, and, Susan, uh, creating of ideas about using groups and subgroups. I know uh, we've had a, a lot of luck in our, we just recently launched an MBA program. And uh, we've had a lot of success in kind of putting the students into two teams right at the beginning in a management class. And basically, uh, within each group, the students rotate leadership of that group. And uh, turns being week by week, one week the students will be the workers. And in another week, uh, the students be the manager. So they kind of get that sense of responsibility for others and then responsibility to a greater source because you know, whenever we're uh, uh, trying to train future business leaders, it's important that they know how to lead, but it's also important that they understand how to work in a group and to uh, to take leadership from those above them because not everybody's going to be an entrepreneur. And, and I want my students to be what prepared to go out into big business and understand that it, there is some give and Have take to that? it. So the, the group system seems to work very well for that. They don't. And, and again, I'm not an, uh, an you know, administrator. I, I have used that because it seems like a lot of times if you don't do the grouping first, the groups don't work as well. And and again, I'm not an, uh, an LMS administrator. I don't understand that, but me. I do I that never it's uh, grouping. I only use you. Uh, and I'm the admin. if you do if you set and up the grouping first, it seems like your fine. group settings work better. So, so I just sure, always do it all as one how package. Your, how the system, how they work it. Maybe they uh, they just made it a default, and you have no choice. I'm not sure. Helena is irritated. Well, about slow uploading, up clouding, uploading. Okay. Now I'm looking here. It's well, a, put it in the cloud. There's no need to upload these days. You can put it in the cloud and simply um, share the link okay. to whatever it is that you want. Okay, yeah, in groupings, you can uh, do a self-select for the group where you pick them, mm -hmm. or you can do just a random selection. So, and again, uh, it, I guess it just depends. Okay, yeah, in groupings, you can uh, do a self-select for the group where you pick them. Or you can do just a random selection. So, and again, uh, it, I guess it just depends upon. Uh, I find whenever I do grouping in peer review, sometimes it helps me with the students to not pick because I I tend to think, well, this person is is a very good student, so I'll put them with another student. Um, and sometimes I pre question pre judge or pre select assessment grading. And I feel like it you can doing the random grouping uh, takes my opinion out of that. Groups. In fact, you can even have groups for one individual so that you can work with that student one on one. Yeah, and we also use uh, groups and grouping for uh, students who need extended time on sessions. Yeah, and we also use uh, groups and grouping for uh, students who need extended time on testing so that the test can open at the same time for everybody. But if they have like a reading disability or something where they need an extra 15 
minutes on a test. That's a great idea, set it so that it's available to them, about. and yeah, it doesn't you can organize highlight it in any so other student ways. that this but one you need student to get students, may need that extra uh, time. Something to so think about it's sensitive to, to their um, individual needs. Provide teachers with a way to um, practice the grouping. I haven't figured it out yet, but um, it's important so that they know how it works.